Hey everyone, I'm Boom. I'm Spice, and this is Fantasy Friday, Episode 4, Mistborn, Book 1, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. We are going to cover the entire Mistborn trilogy in the next three episodes. So, spoilers for that right off the jump. This is the spoiler-free section, but it won't last forever. And we are covering the uh, the first book in the trilogy. Uh, boom. Give me your preliminary thoughts on this book. All right. Uh, so, for this book, it's... Uh, I've got mixed feelings about it uh, for a couple reasons. Like, I'm a big fan of like cool magic systems and this one while it has some cool magic i feel like it might be too much a pretty pretty serious might uh individually i think they're pretty good uh there's some it's it's a really interesting world might not be my favorite one i like it for a lot of the reasons i liked uh lies of black lamara because uh, at first it's not a very big world, and then, uh, but then it's just not quite as quite. It's not quite as good. It's not my yeah. favorite book of all time. It's not my favorite trilogy of all time. Uh, but there was there was definitely some decent parts of it overall. You know enough to, that we read three books of it. Yeah. Uh, we thanks, Spice. Um, I thought it was fine. I um, I don't really have much like truck with um with like magic systems to use a phrase of terry pratchett's um it's not really something that compels me to read something so it's double-edged sword here he spends a lot of time clarifying a magic system that i don't really care about but on the same token if someone else were to not enjoy this magic system it would be no skin off my nose. I don't really, it, I'm nonplussed by it. So in that respect, I think it's fine. It's a fast read, but that's in part because like I sort of mentally skip over a lot of the action. I don't read books for action sequences. I, I read books for prose and character and setting and themes and things like that. So I just sort of blast through the um, combat. So a lot of it moves by pretty fast for me. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point too, especially with when you're dealing with powers like these, like these fight scenes are just wild. Like yeah. it, it's so difficult to place these guys in, and gals in your mind, like what's going on yeah. uh, with what's written. Uh, so yeah, no, that definitely makes it kind of just like, all right, we'll get through this. Kind of like uh, in the Lord of the Rings, a lot of people skip over the the poetry, which is like wrong. You shouldn't. This is different. Yeah. This is this is allowed. The fighting that we can't see is being explained really fast. Yeah. You're not really getting. I mean, like as long as we know who wins, that's really all you need from it. Brandon just goes into too much detail with some of these characters, like in terms of their models, like when the Chondra, um, yeah. our sore, um, occupies a dog's body and uh, they don't tell you initially how the dog looks, but you're imagining a dog, any sort of dog. And then it's like, Oh, it's this type of dog. It's this dog <laughs> in a very specific detail. Yeah. It's like, well, now I need to, like, like my mind's vacillating back and forth between my dog and your dog now. Yeah. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then, like, yeah, and this dog does things that dogs could never do, like bounding up giant walls the way Vin does in some ways, or, like, gets attacked in ways dogs could never survive and survives. I know more outlandish things happen in fantasy all the time, but then just takes you out of your immersion i think of it when you're trying to imagine a little dog just... <laughs> doing these crazy things before we know like yeah mm -hmm. um uh, if you're not a big fan of organized religion this might not be for you there's a pretty big jesus allegory in here that 
this isn't like a trigger warning. Like, I don't really like, I'm not religious, nor is boom, but I think it's fine. I don't think it's an especially appalling thing. I, there's more disagreeable stuff in this book for sure than having a very obvious Jesus allegory. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you on both of those things. Like the, uh, the over description. I mean, at the end of the day, like when reading this, picturing stuff in my head, like, let me do it. <laughs> you can save yourself a lot of breath, you know, if you just yep. give us the, the, the bones, we can make characters. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then, like you said, you know, when you do describe it in such detail, like if I had something else that I want to, I want to like have as the dog for the rest of the trip and I'm fighting that with what you're saying, <laughs> which I mean, I guess it's your book, but it's like, is that the, is that the important part of this? That the dog <laughs> looks this way? <laughs> why can't, why can't you look my way? And then, exactly. and then, yeah. Yeah. No, but then the, the whole, uh, the whole religion thing, it hurts me more because of, you know, just the tropes it makes it fall into, uh, more so than the actual, you know, re- religious aspects. Like what? Like just, you know, having her be this, uh, this God, just kind of, you know, like what we're always talking about with like losing your s- suspense, uh, you know, the, the, the main character can't do any wrong. Yeah. It just, it just takes away from the storytelling that way, which I do find offensive. <laughs> Not, not seriously, just, you know, reading guys. Yeah. And, uh, boom, anything else before we leave the, uh, spoiler section or the non-spoiler section, rather? No, I think, I think we're, I think we're good to get into it. A lot of these, a lot of what we've got today revolves around these spoilers. Yeah. On that note, uh, please join us next time for book two of the Mistborn series, Well of Ascension. And if you don't want to meet us for that, which I wouldn't blame you, in a few episodes' time, we'll be covering book one of the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett, The Color of Magic. Those you're going to want to see or listen to. Or read. And read. Yeah, they're short. Don't read the podcast. Read the book. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to type all this out. No, I (laughs) don't get paid. We're deep, not deep, deep in the red, but deep in the red. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. We haven't spent all that much, but we, we have made nothing. And if you're talking man hours, like we're never making this back. Oh, no, no, no. Even minimum wage. Hourly, no. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. No, because we're going to we, we record this. Uh, we're not good editors. I don't know if you've, if you've noticed by now. <laughs> so it's not videos, editors. We're not, we're not good at that. <laughs> we just don't edit. <laughs> well, on that note, I've been Spice. And I'm Boo. Thanks for listening. And we're back with the spoiler section. Now, boom. Boom. Bo- bookman. Boom Bookman. Um, would... <laughs> We last name drop. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> um, getting down to brass tacks. Who would you recommend this book for, and why, if anyone? Um, uh, that's that's tough. Uh, I was gonna say like fans of his work, but this is probably the ones that got you into his work. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I I, I think if you're really in because I know there are like people really into like super complex magic and like these wild out there systems and then like taking your already wild system and throwing another one that's also pretty wild in there uh, and having them, you know, fight and stuff. I, if you're really into those like super technical, crazy magic systems, this is a pretty good example of like a super technical, crazy magic system. So, I mean, if that's, if that's what you're into, like, you'll, you'll probably enjoy it. Uh, you just got to make sure. I think there's charts in here that I missed. <laughs> Go to the back of the book. <laughs> uh, that'll help, you know, because there, there gets to be a point where you're like, okay, I got to remember all these metals. Because they won't, that, eventually he, he starts going on and he's like, she burned tin. It's like, all right, what does tin do? I don't know what they're doing. Oh, uh, something like, with sight. something yeah. far away. Yeah, it's like, okay, all right, there we go. Let's, 
So maybe like tear <laughs> tear out the last page and just have it as a reference. Yeah, to tape it to your wall, like <laughs> like those. Um, study it. Like there's gonna be a test on it. Just there will be. That will. <laughs> yeah, he's because he's gonna start not <laughs> saying what it's doing. Um, oh yeah. They you know they've got like he has a pretty good chart on here. It just would have been cool if it was in the beginning. Or if it was diegetic, like if it was in the book. Yeah. Yeah, just throw it somewhere. Like, yeah, Kelsier made this chart for me. Like, that's all you had to do. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. And then you can just dog ear that page. Like, if, yep. I need to, if I need a reference, no, page 46. You There's could put a copy chart. of it in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, the, the, the chart's useful. <coughs> it's, it's laid out really well. Like, you can see which ones are related to what, what the people are called that use it, and what it does. Yeah. Pretty, it's a pretty good chart. Yeah. Uh, uh, here we're getting back to like worlds that need maps yeah. uh, to make sense. And they definitely like could use the map because uh, there's a couple times where they're talking about staging of the, the troops and yeah. stuff. You know, we're kind of, if you're not totally savvy on what they're talking about, it might make sense to check the map and then you kind of have a better idea. Uh, but like those aren't those aren't real minuses, you know. Yeah. If you're really into that, then this is the the kind of book. You know, it's definitely a super involved magic, a bigger world than what we've read recently. Uh, so, yeah, I think you could definitely enjoy it then. Yeah, I agree. I um, I think the characters aren't as fun all around as those found in Lies of Lac Lamara. Um, Kelsey is just a pretty straight jesus allegory and it feels like people talk about how cool he is more than he actually acts cool which is fine like i don't i don't know it's hard to write compelling characters in terms of like charisma because similar to that arthur arthur conan doyle quote it's like your character's only as cool as you can make them like i don't know how cool brandon is in his real life so that's not really a criticism of him it's just um I don't know. I'm not super compelled by Kelsier, which is also a shame because he's like my third favorite character in the book. <laughs> so it doesn't really bode well for at least at this point, because one character we meet now who's more of a negative in this book and the next book becomes a positive in the third book. So like, like his name's Spook and um, I don't like his name. It sounds vaguely racist. Um, and he has this like thing where he speaks in a dialect that's not native to their region and it's perceived as slang and everyone's a classist jerk to him about it to the point where he changes his entire speech pattern not like just code switching changes it entirely even the way he thinks and it's considered a good thing that he changes I don't think that's a good message to send your readership. I yeah, no, I, not, not at all. I yeah. completely agree with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Instead of like them just being like, you know what? This guy's a member of our team. Like, let's accept him. How he does it. He yeah. has his job. Like, we're just, we're going to, yeah, we're not going to down this guy because it's like, no, you need to change. <laughs> As a person. <laughs> yeah. Like, not even just clean it up around us or while yeah. we're doing these things. Yeah, so for clarity's sake. A little yeah. bit better. Like, no, you need as a person to change the entire way you are <laughs> yeah because it's not not all right yeah you sound <laughs> poor and i don't like it this is everyone in this book yeah no, that, including that, the people we're supposed to like yeah. especially the people we're supposed yeah to like. it's his teammates <laughs> it's the gang that do this to him because then it's like outside of the gang and like later where people are like you shouldn't cover that yeah, up exactly he's like wait what like all my best friends in my said I should. the only family member i have yeah they all said i should what it's okay to just like be me strange message to send brandon but no, i agree like i first two books i was just did not have a good time with them being a character and then at the end giving him that little uh not even a little part of the last book that was a pretty big Pretty, yeah pretty big uh whole journey thing he goes on that was kind of cool yeah we'll get into that once we get to uh hero of ages i know it's, um, uh, 
Yeah, Kelsier is like my third favorite book or character in the book. My second favorites were Sir. I think their contract system's pretty good. Yeah. I uh, I generally don't like like when fantasy characters advocate for slavery. But I think the fact that someone rebels at the end and is treated as the good guy is good. And I think that works. Um, then my favorite is Sazed. Oh, yeah. No, no question. That, that's a, that is a super interesting character. I think he's the idea. only, yeah, the only aspect of any Brandon Sanderson book I've read thus far that is transcendent, that like lives up to the good stuff in Dune, the good stuff in Lies. Yep, you can you can throw size of against just about any fantasy yep. character we've read, and he is just as interesting, yep. just as cool an idea. Yeah, like I think the idea of categorizing really anything as an intellectual part of this like species is neat. I don't think the eunuch aspect is necessary. I think it works, but it's not really something that I enjoy. No, and it's not a big part, really, of him. And then book two, it does. Yeah, yeah. Book two, it becomes a big and part. And then, uh, yeah, they just have some weird scenes involving it. Yeah, I don't. I didn't need to be there. I don't really like having characters speculate on the other characters' like genitals and stuff. That doesn't really feel no, good to me. Um, and then. Late. I think that's later books. More yeah. stuff that goes on with it. But well, there's that point where he's freeing Vin. Yeah. And he's naked. And it's like, oh, like he... they make a point of him. Yeah. Not having it's like this is not related to anything that's going on yeah. right now. I don't know why we have to talk about his genitals as he's saving Vin. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a big part of that scene. Also, like fantasy genocide. I don't like it. I. I feel like there's good enough metaphors in other forms of media that we don't need this. Like for every Brandon Sanderson having like the Lord ruler commit genocide in a fantasy world, at least once there's like a million more elegant metaphors out there. Like um, there's that poem, the whole like first they came for the communists, that whole deal. Mm -hmm. Like that's way more um, light handed, way more like deft than this. It's more daft than deft, mm -hmm. if I say so myself. Um, yeah, I don't understand why people need to invoke such tremendous like like points of suffering in the real world to be evocative when it's just unnecessary. Yeah. No, and these Mistborn books take it like he takes it pretty far with the yeah. suffering and just the terribleness. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just a little bit, uh, a little much. Yeah. And there's moments in like future books where they're like, well, man, I kind of wish I was under the Lord ruler again. And it's like that guy committed genocide, dude. <laughs> That guy systematically um, caused the death of an entire species, essentially, and caused genocide by multiple definitions, both by just killing people in mass, but also like through systematic, yeah. um, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, sterilization. Like it's it's really insidious. And it's like, this isn't really a criticism of the character because it's like, I'll take evil characters. It's Brandon choosing to invoke this rather than just being more clever to create more attention in other places. So it's um, it's not good, not a no, good choice. No, it brings down, it just brings down the whole reading, you know? So yeah. instead of being like super tense about these exciting scenes, you're just super like, Bummed disgusted out. and yeah. bummed out about what's happening, which, you know, you could have could have directed that at like just the Lord Roller being a bad guy. So you're like yeah. mad at him. Instead you're just like, man, this, this sucks. This is just rough. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. In a similar token, the world is dreary. It's a place I'd never want to live or visit. Yeah. No sunshine or plants. Yeah. The sky the is red. Raining. The plants are scrub, if that. 
Um, there's no real wild animals to speak of besides like horses. Um, there's giant monsters who are told in way too much detail, like the Coloss. Way, <laughs> way yeah, too much one detail. Of those. Good grief. Man. Jeez. <laughs> take, take a seat, dude. Too much. Um, and, and like they're not even like us knowing about that is not even a big they're just like man. works i don't like they're just big dudes big dangerous people yeah the the fact that they were you know if we could have just known that they were held together with metal spikes they used to be people like yeah you know maybe just a little bit about they look gross like that's okay but we're yeah. like we're hearing about how the skin on their faces is like peeling back every time he talks about one what is happening to the individual one we're hearing about like, yeah. yeah i don't know it's like an it's an interesting like it's a fine idea to have in there yeah you know? it's just like, a waste of time it feels that like, can be yeah. controlled by the misborn like that's a good idea like yeah but I'm just wasting time with this much. description yeah. yeah you got three books like you probably could have cut one of them out precisely <laughs> just less about those guys um I think the whole reading books at the uh, balls is lame. I think that's that's not a good way of trying to demonstrate that this guy is like a, a grumpy, intelligent misanthrope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're trying to show how he's cool and above it all, and he's going in the corner and reading. It's like when do you read in public? Boom! You like reading? When do you read in public? Not at an event, or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like I'll go out and, like sit at a park yep. or, you know, like outside on my, my patio, you know, it's, 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 it doesn't paint you as a cool guy to be, when everyone yeah. wants to talk to you and hang out to be reading just because you want to show them you don't want to talk to yeah. them. It's like a barrier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it, it's kind of like how, uh, you know, he, he disagrees with, you know, his dad, you know, it's, it's similar to how like uh, Ray Odin, yeah. Odin like disagrees with his dad, but instead of like just reading at parties, he like talks with other people who yeah. don't like it and they like make plans for a better world. Like that's kind of cool. And they have like a club that Ellen's in, but they're all like, no one's serious about yeah, it. Yeah, they're just above it all, bohemian sort of. Yeah, like... no, like Ray Odin takes like, the nobles that have actual sway and is like trying to show yeah. them a better way with his time instead of just acting like he is above all of them. Yeah. Um, that's all pretty lame. Um, I don't get what he sees in Vin. She's not funny. She's not especially interesting. Like, she's mysterious under her guise as, like, the granddaughter of that noble, but, like, not in a way that is all that compelling, um, at least for the readership. Um, generally, I just feel nothing with this romance, and it's, like, half of the plot. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is, and it's the, uh, yeah, the whole, how, how it's starting, and they're they're you know meeting up at these parties doesn't feel very authentic like just they would like that they're destined and then it leads to the like devotion to each other being weird yeah by the end of it because it's like what where, where did this yeah, for what? come from you guys haven't even known each other long yep it's all in like two years mm -hmm. um there's this point where um at the end kelsier uh, dies and his bones are eaten by Orsor and um, he's he comes back and it's a good scene I guess but what it results in for Vin's character where she's like I don't like Orsor he ate Kelsier's bones it's like this is Kelsier's plan Dumb yeah that voice. was that was super childish yeah. <laughs> like just what yeah like you know what he is and yeah. that Kelsier literally told him to do this. He has to do it yeah. because of that. He is honor and <laughs> legally bound by contract to do this. Yeah, I mean, it sucks. Like, it'd be off-putting, but you hate him yeah. for his job. It's like, you know, it's like Locke and Jean hating the, the 
bondsman job. Bondsman job because yeah. they're doing their job. Like sometimes jobs suck. And the bondsman <laughs> guy killed all his friends. Yeah, he did. This guy didn't. He's working with Kelsey. Like yeah. he's, he was a friend. The plan wouldn't work if he didn't do this. Exactly. He needed to be revived down and, you know, and comes, come back. That's <laughs> comes back after three work, days. Come back. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They opened the tomb and no one was there. And <laughs> a little, a little the nose. Yeah. Man, thank you, Brandon. That was cool. If, if only I were a Mormon. Then... <laughs> You're like this guy is on to something. Uh, yeah. I I had a miserable miserable time reading these three books, and a part of it was the fact that they are bloated. This is. Between the two of them, it takes twice the length to tell a story that, like, Elantris does in 700 pages. Um, it's just not a place I'd like to live or visit. And the world seems to never get better for yeah. most of, like, this entire book. Even when they, like, come out of poverty, the serfs in the society still have a terrible time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it really, it really doesn't. This book is just after it's over, it's bad. It yeah. starts bad. The whole uh, the Mistborn idea is cool. I, I, like, I mean, by now, you, you listeners know I don't love it when the main character is the most powerful person in general. You know, it can work. Mistborn's uh, being Mistborn isn't quite so bad if she was just Mistborn, because there are other Mistborns that are yeah. like more experienced but you can like as even in this book she's like a prodigy misborn yeah has been doing it for a month kelsier has been doing it for years she's like better than him soon it's like, yeah all right i don't know it's kind of weird that she'd pick up on it so quick but uh but being misborn in itself isn't so bad it, it gets worse uh with with her being you know what we find out later yeah it's uh, not, not that good. But if you had to assign a grade to this, what would you give it? This one, I'd, pr I'd probably go like a C, C minus. Yeah, I was thinking C. like a C. A 75% C. Yeah. Because it's, uh, there, 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 are, there are things I like. Like, I really don't hate the magic. I wish they, they could have been separate. You know, this is one of those things where, like, alchemy is pretty cool. It's hard to describe in books as it's happening, yeah. you know, especially with the Mistborns because they're flying around and going crazy. It's hard to really grasp that as it's happening. But, like, the whole, the whole being, like, a tin eye and being able to enhance your senses. Coin shots metal, and stuff. Yeah. It's cool. I like that it's, uh, it's like, finite resources that you have, you know, so you have to come prepared. Like, it, it's not just, like endless supply of this magic stuff uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff there uh, then ferrochemy is also cool but I feel like it might be a lot for one series to have two super complex systems like that that play weirdly together yeah I agree it is a lot results in a lot of glossing over just like, well, let's just get to the point where, you know, the plot picks up again. Yeah. And then it gets, it gets to the point where like with a lot of these where by the end of the show, like if, by the end of the show, <laughs> by the end of the, uh, the book, you know, if you're not misborn or the hero of ages, like you're just, you're not relevant you're at nobody. all. Yeah. And I, I hate that, you know, cause you get characters that are cool and then they might do like, you know, like Saza can do like, really cool things for like a minute but at the end of the day it's like he's not gonna really go up against these uh i forget what they were called things with the metal spikes for eyes uh the inquisitors inquisitors yeah. those are kind of cool i don't like the eye aspect i feel I like that's it's... hard to visualize for me yeah no spikes for eyes and they see through them somehow yeah maybe just like let them keep their eyes you want yeah. to see, you know, like doing. Hey, you gotta have spikes in a lot of places on your body, but through your eyes, your actual eyes. Yeah, they can see like better 
than people. It's kind of weird. Oh, yeah, and I don't like the names for people in this series. They almost all have one-syllable names. And it's like, do I really want to call this dude Ham? Like, <laughs> I know. Like, <laughs> it's the serious, like, you know, this is this, this brutish guy. Get over here, Ham. Also sophisticated, yeah, I'm calling him Ham. With what? Clubs. Clubs. Spook. Spook, who is that? What was the other guy? Marsh. Marsh. Is Marsh the one who becomes an Inquisitor? Yes, he is. Yeah, so one of the most deadly and impactful characters in the entire trilogy. His name's Marsh. Some guy. <laughs> Marsh. Yeah, he definitely didn't get a main character name. You know, like Kelsey or that's, that's cool. Alan. That's main character know. name. Alan can be. Man, then, not really. Man. Wish, sir. <laughs> yeah. Gonna... Kind of sounds French. It's like, a, like hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> hors d'oeuvres. No, those things are cool. Yeah. Uh, Condra. The Condra are cool. It's a cool idea. There's cool stuff in here. Like, I could take the Inquisitors, some would. The Condras, for sure. Those are, yeah. That's and then the Keepers, like Sazed in particular, but the Keepers. And scrap almost everything else from this book, and I would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he, uh, I would like in some that interview we were looking at that one time he writes he, like he has like a ton of ideas and writes them down and it's like i feel like with elantris there's like so much constraint shown yeah like these books didn't have none of it we're just like writing everything down and keeping it yeah elantris like you can tell went through some work yeah oh and i didn't even mention it yeah the the audiobook i was doing with elantris this is like bonus elantris material uh, like he he was talking about he had a whole other like character oh, yeah. that he ended up taking out. That's funny. We've got bonus material that's about their bonus material. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's kind of crazy. Uh, Raymond was supposed to have a brother the whole time. Yeah. A mad twin brother who uh, like yeah, was just kind of insane, and they like send him away, and he comes back, and he was the one who does a lot of the conniving and flipping the script and stuff. But then he was like, that was just going to be too much. Like I was, I was introducing him like three quarters of the way through and yeah. I would not have been, it would have been way too much. Like that's probably a good call. That's none of that shown here. <laughs> no. Brandon Sanderson regressed as a writer during the Mistborn series. What the heck? And it's like, it's not the same as like imagining like, do you know Runaway by Kanye West? Um, it's off of uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. It's just got like a bunch of components. All the songs in there do. You got like like Nicki Minaj putting on like this thick British accent. You got Pusha T and Rick Ross going crazy. You got this fake guitar solo on Runaway. Like it's just like Kanye West like humming for minutes on end. It's just everything all at once. But the point of that album is opulence. It's trying to be above the like over the top because that's where rap was at the time this it's just like all right we're gonna have three magic systems and there's yeah. like four <laughs> different types of monsters it's... created by like this god but that god isn't really the god there's another god that can be fought by our main character who's also kind of a god but she also has a brother who comes back but doesn't really come back because he's an embodiment of that god and also, there's this dude who's like, there's some, <laughs> like there's, yeah, no, it's just like he just kept throwing stuff in. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, lack of restraint, just too much. This isn't the same as Lies of Lock Lamara, where it's like, like, oh man, the human chest can turn into its own book. It's like, do I really want a book about the Coloss? Yeah about the old man in the wheelchair who yells at people all the time in the second book like no um yeah overall an okay book um certainly read worse um but not a harbinger of good things to come in the series no and and just with with all of the uh the praise that these get you know like that's why we picked yeah. it up was because it's it's so highly regarded by a lot of people in 
another fantasy reading. Not book. worth the hype. No. And the Lanterns is not. They're always like, oh, that's a decent first book he wrote. And the Mistborns, when it gets good. Like yeah. that is the Flip that. Yeah, no. This is a decent. If this would have been the first book, we'd be like, okay, could do some yeah. cleaning up, you know? But it's like, he can definitely write books. He has ideas for books. And yeah, we came to this came conclusion up. independent. Like, totally independently of each other. Well, next time you can join us for book two of the Mistborn trilogy, uh, The Hero of Ages. If you don't want to join us for that, uh, coming out soon, we'll have Discworld 1, um, The Color of Magic. And, uh, Boom, do you have any thoughts before? No, you I, uh, I think we're all set here. Uh, on to the Well of Ascension with the next one. Oh, did I goof? I think we <laughs> Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, jeez. Cut the tape. No. <laughs> Throw it out. Oh, I'm going home and taking a nap after this. I've been awake for way too long. <laughs> we got to go to jujitsu after this. Yeah, a couple of jujitsu practitioners. Yeah. Boom won a tournament the other week. He did, yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Yeah, now we're, we're getting some friends ready for a tournament they got this week. He's getting them ready. I'm I'm too big to go with them, I guess. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that was fun though. Yeah. <laughs> I'll guess beating up on like Kyle. Yeah. God, I wish I was tall. Yeah. Win against Kyle. <laughs> I get him every time we go, but like, it's sheerly because of the size. It's not fair he's, at all. He's tough, man. He's a tough guy. He's uh, he's he's real slinky. He's yeah. His frames are tough. I don't know, tough dude. Well, you can join us next time. <laughs> next time for the Well of Ascension. Yep. Um, and on that note, I've been Spice. I'm Boom. Uh, thanks for stopping by. <laughs>